When you go to court and say the other person is in contempt, you are asking the judge to believe that the other person has not obeyed a court order. You are also asking the judge to do something about it. These four videos will help both sides needing information about contempt cases. If you want to file a contempt case against someone and file it correctly, this will help you plan and think through your case. If you've been sued for contempt, these videos will provide you information that helps you defend yourself. Contempt cases are tricky to get right. When someone makes a mistake, the other side often wins. Both parties need to clearly understand the law. The result of a contempt case can have serious consequences. If you file the case and lose, it can mean the loss of money you are owed. If you are sued for contempt and lose, you may go to jail. It is important to follow the law carefully. At any point in a contempt case, you may want to consult with an attorney, as the process can be difficult to understand and contempt is hard to prove. In the typical case, one person goes to court and states the other person has violated a court order. Unfortunately, the violation has usually taken place outside of the courthouse, meaning it happened out of the direct sight or hearing of the court. This is called indirect contempt. Because the judge did not see the violation happen, the person asking for the contempt order must prove the violation, including all case elements. There are at least four and sometimes five elements you must prove. Number one, there was a valid court order. Number two, the person being accused of not obeying the order knew about the order. Number three, the order has not been obeyed. Number four, the other party has the ability to obey the order now or they were aware and knew they were not obeying the order in the past. Number five, punishment is necessary to vindicate the dignity of the court, meaning the court made a decision in an order and the person being accused of contempt is being disrespectful to the court by not following the court's order. You must prove all elements. If the judge is not convinced about one or more of the elements, you may lose. The elements will be covered in more detail later. Let's look more closely at the fourth element of proof, number four. Either the person has the ability to obey the order now, or the person was willfully disobedient in the past. Before you file for contempt, you should think about what you want to ask for if you win. You may want the other person to do what they were ordered to do, or you might want them punished for not doing it. If you want the person to be punished for the failure to obey the order, you must show that the person was willfully disobedient meaning the person knew about the order but chose not to follow it for whatever reason. In general, you will have to show that the person had the ability to obey the order but that the person deliberately chose not to and without good reason. Beyond that, you must convince the judge that the violation of the court order was bad enough to require a punishment in order to preserve the court's reputation. Think carefully before you ask the court to punish the other person. For example, there is not much point in having a person sent to jail if he or she needs to earn money to pay child support. Also, you should consider the effect on your child or children if the other parent has to go to jail. In addition, if you are seeking punishment, you should be aware that any fine imposed by the court will be paid to the state of Colorado and not you. If you want the court to force the person to do what the person was originally supposed to do, you must show that the person has the present ability to obey the order. If you are sued for contempt, you need to consider what evidence to offer in your defense. If the other party is asking the judge to force you to do something, a sufficient defense is to prove your current inability to do what the order tells you to do. Even if you knew about the order and have not obeyed it, you can't be forced to follow the order if it's impossible for you to do so. If you can't do it, then you can't be jailed in order to force you to obey the order. When the other party is asking the judge to punish you for not obeying the order, a successful defense might be to show you could not obey the order in the past, or you didn't mean to disobey the order, or that the violation of the order was so minimal as to make a judge think punishment is not needed. 
Remedial contempt means the goal of the contempt case is to force a person to do what the person was ordered to do. The judge has to believe that the person can actually do it. The court is being asked to fix or remedy the situation. Punitive contempt means the court is asked to punish someone's willful disobedience to obey an order. The paperwork and procedures for a contempt case begin the same way in remedial and punitive contempt cases, but once the trial begins, the in-court procedure is quite different. If you are filing the case, this is why it's important to know what your goal is. Know the result you want from the beginning. If you don't, you may not follow the correct court procedure. Pay attention to whether the other person follows correct court procedures if you are sued for contempt. Spotting mistakes made by the other person filing the case can often mean a win for the defense. Civil procedures apply if a remedy is being requested. That means that the case only has to be proven by a slight weight of the evidence. This may sound easy, but if you are filing the case, finding evidence that the person has the ability to obey an order today can be impossible. For example, when you know the other person is unemployed and therefore doesn't have the money you are owed, you more than likely will not win a remedial contempt case. Criminal procedure applies if punishment is being requested. The case must be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. In addition to the usual proof, you must also convince the judge that the contempt is serious enough to justify a punishment. Differences between remedial and punitive contempt are covered in much more detail later. At any point, you may want to consult with an attorney, as this information can be difficult to understand and contempt is hard to prove. If you decided to pursue your case on your own, you will need to understand the type of contempt involved in your case. It's important not to confuse the two types of contempt cases. The rest of the information in these videos has been separated into three parts. The next video describes the basic forms and contempt process. The last two videos provide detailed information about remedial contempt and punitive contempt. If you are thinking about filing a contempt case, you will need to decide whether you want to ask the judge to fix or remedy the situation, or whether you want to ask the judge to punish the other person. When you've decided what result you want, complete this video and then watch the video covering basic forms and procedures common to all contempt cases. Once you've watched that video, Watch the video covering the type of contempt case you want to file. If you are being sued for contempt, read through the paperwork and understand what the other person is asking for, a remedy, punishment, or both. If you can't tell, then watch all videos following this one.